as lack, missing, and that which causes us to desire. So in the matrix cell we are dealing with links and therefore it is a priori already in the field of between presence and absence. You cannot capture it completely, you never can capture the whole object, but you cannot either lose it completely, not even in death, you don't really lose totally uh, all this field of inscription of mental traces because they are not inscribed only in yourself. They are inscribed in others as well. So there are some uh, essays, for example, uh, in that field where I develop how the notion of transgenerational memory, for example, work, or in what ways the artist elaborate traces of the other, of the world, of the cosmos, I don't know, not of itself and not of herself and still can deliver it in a way which make us move and make, make us work and transforms us because these boundaries between that which is mine because I experienced it and not mine because I didn't experience it don't, don't work so well in the matrix. This is not this um, this is not uh, my experience, mine and only, and I'm the only one who's going to tell about it and so on. It's another problematic. And uh, there are two concepts that uh, I'd better put immediately as well. Uh, what I call compassionate hospitality, com slash passionate hospitality. And, uh, and fascinance. Fascinance is more on the order of the aesthetics and the work of art, and compassionate hospitality is more on the order of ethics and on the order of uh, psychoanalytical treatment and, uh, of course, the, it is not a game to cut the word compassion but in the matrix it is absolutely necessary to show the co in all these kind of etymologically uh, the problematic of compassion, for example. You have a sharing in the pathic uh, in compassionate. Okay, now why I talk about hospitality is not for the same uh, reasons that, uh, for example, Derrida talks about hospitality, but it has a different uh, source altogether. And this source comes with the, with the Latin word matrix, which stands for womb. I hope you're not going to be shocked and we are not going to talk about the origin of the subject in the womb in any sense. But what is very important is to take the womb or the situation of a pregnancy in its uh, the metaphorical richness of it, but also the, re the, the real status of the real of that, in order to imagine not what we usually imagine, an origin or enveloping environment where the subject is going to emerge, but rather the capacity in the human and vehicled through the feminine body, female body, of creating uh, the capacity to have a space where from the beginning indeed, from the moment we start to talk about subject, we can talk about transsubjectivity, we can talk about I and non-I, they are not in the same level of maturity, they are not in the same, they don't resemble, but you have the capacity in the human to apprehend and to incorporate and to process um, vibrations and all kind of sensations and so on coming from the other in the eye. If some of you, those of you who are um, acquainted with psychoanalytical theory might think here about uh, Bion, you know, the analyst uh, Bion who was talking about the paternal, maternal capacity to elaborate all kind of uh, traces, things that are coming from the baby, the mother elaborate them, give them sense, but not yet 
articulated sense like a language, but give them some kind of sense and in a sense transmitting to the baby again in all kind of ways already a word that is less chaotic than what is coming from the baby. So here there is already an, uh, an idea of the mother, that the capacity of the mother to elaborate phantasmatic traces and memory for the baby and return it back to him or her. With the matrix cell we are moving, we are <laughs> leaping a stage in the thinking itself and because we should consider uh, this trans subjective activity working without the mother waiting for signs from the baby. So we can talk about shareable, sharing trauma, sharing phantasmatic traces, but they are elaborated on different level by different partial subjects. Now, if we take that as a human capacity, a psychic capacity, there's no reason to believe that this capacity disappears. It does not disappear, it goes into a certain hiding because it is not very, very um, visible. It is not uh, provable so much. You know, you can, there's a lot of processes that are matrixial that are easily disturbed, moving aside. Our, especially adult subjectivity, ruling it out where it's a phallic system of uh, operating for men and for women. It's not a question of gender. It's a question of different uh, strata of subjectivity. And one of them, usually easier to recognize, is, is the phallic uh, stratum. So let's imagine in that uh, way, as if it was um, kind of pregnant, each, each encounter event was a kind of a pregnancy between adults meeting right now, for example. And let's imagine this meeting happening on a level which is less defensive, you know, the eye is not defending itself and we are not completely inside our shells and we are sharing for good or bad all kind of information and vibration and on that level of partial subjectivity, I, which is a partial subject, only a part of me, right, meets a non-I. There is a meeting. And the I meets another non-I. And this non-I meets another I or non-I, which relates to him or her. Each encounter creates its own psychic resonance field, and each resonance field is with and in other fields of resonance. And yet, we are not going to go with that into sort of endless multiplicity. We are not, uh, it's not the, f the endless fragmentation a la Deleuze or Guattari. We are not transforming from the one subject into endless multiplicity of fragmentation. I'm talking about fields of resonance, they are limited each time they are limited, and they are limited to encounters, and therefore each matrixial cluster is a web of meeting of one within the other, and I cut the word within, because we need to cut it here. It is with and in, in a we and with, where each one and each other belongs to several such clusters. The matrixial web is thus the body psyche time space of the intimate, even though it is a web of several, and it is from the one set transgressive. Several or severality is one of, uh, is a key concept in the matrixial space, because as I said, we are not moving into endless multiplicity. I wouldn't say one, two, three, or four, it doesn't matter, but the idea of the several, of severality is standing on its own, okay? And not as multiplicity limited or oneness multiplied, okay? It's another cluster, it works in a different way. <laughs> 